Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. You know, we can pick and choose scripture and compare it to what's going on. We want to hate our enemy. God says, love your enemy. We want to create all kind of havoc and wars and, and outbreaks. God says, blessed are the peacemakers. What is it about us that we are so bent on violence? We are so bent on volatile excitement and 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 unrest and it it draws us like bees to honey what is that what is it that makes that breaks up friendships i have a friend who voted for one president who's pulling for one i'm pulling for the other right we were both pulling in two opposite directions but we are both born again Christians. Did we stop talking to each other? No. We even get on the phone and debate and argue our points of views. But when it's all said and done, we agree to disagree. And then we joke about, okay, now that we have solved the world's problems, what are you doing tomorrow after church? And what are you doing? And da da da. And are you going to watch that movie? And have you seen that movie yet? I mean, we just go back to being friends. Because we're talking. But it has nothing to do with our relationship with each other. And what I am seeing is a divisiveness starting to work. People are starting to get so stirred up and revved up that they are ready to hate. You don't like what I like, I hate you. You don't agree with me, you're not worthy of my time. I literally had a lady tell me, well, I can't subscribe to you anymore because you like him. I don't like him, you like him. So I can't subscribe to you anymore. Where is the love of God in that? Now, my feelings aren't hurt. I'm not offended. That person has every right to feel the way they feel. And they have their reasons. Just like I have my reasons to feel what I feel. My point is, what this can do is become a pandemic in and of itself. A pandemic of hate and division. Bigotry intolerance i'm not saying to tolerate the sins that are against god's ways no but you are still to love the people you are still to pray we've got to pray hard for president trump now we've got to pray hard one of my other friends told me he got saved so we have to pray that god opens his ear to hear god's heart that God gives him the mind of Christ, the heart of God, and a love for the people of America. I do believe it is totally appropriate now for President Trump to apologize for some of what he said because some of it was racially inciting or indicting some of it <clears throat> stirred up people's negative feelings towards other people some of what he said was divisive so you know whatever we all say stupid things in our lives we all say inappropriate things in our lives <coughs> excuse me but god forgives and if god has forgiven him then we must too. But the main thing we have to do is pray for him. You hear me? People call him a wild card. That very well may be. But if God is working in his life, he will end up being a servant of God, which would be good for everybody because God knows best. We have to pray for him, you guys. And we have to stop hating each other. <coughs> Excuse me. I need to bundle up again. It's getting chilly. We need to stop hating each other. I mean it. 
We need to stop calling each other names. We need to stop calling him names. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm cold. We need to stop calling him names. We need to stop um, starting riots. We need to stop the violent demonstrations. You know, this is what I don't get. Here we are in America, supposedly civilized. Mm -hmm. And we're out there in the streets busting up other people's businesses, busting up other people's cars, burning other people's cars. You're not burning anything that belongs to Trump. You don't like Trump? Pray for him. But don't burn some total stranger's property because you're having a hissy fit. <coughs> don't start a fight. A woman basically almost slapped a man upside the head because of disagreement. What sense does that make? Now, here's the question. You want change? Where is the change? What is that going to do to bring about change? other than to make conditions worse. Some of you are so bent on being angry, so determined to fester and, and nurture and, and fan the flame and, and fuel your anger that you don't want to hear anything about calming down. You don't want to hear anything about... You know, let's let's call it a, a truce. Let's call a treaty and, and, and get on our knees and take our cases to God instead of attacking each other. Do you know what that will bring about if we don't stop? A civil war. Not just civil unrest, a civil war. And I beg every one of you, especially you Christians, especially those of you who are following God with all your might. Don't buy into the hype. Don't get caught up in other people's nonsense. Don't in, in, oh, what's the word? Don't absorb another person's attitude. Don't absorb another person's anger, hatred, intolerance, spite, revenge. Please don't do that. Because all we will do is leave behind us in the streets a bunch of carnage. And I ask you, for what? Why, oh, I'm so cold, I can't, why must you spit? Why must you kick, fight, punch? Why? Why set those fires? Why are you busting out the windows? Are you kids? Are you animals? Or are you adults? Are we America? Or are we a zoo? God help us before we implode. 